The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the uh, the next instalment of our D-Link webinars. Um, sorry, I'm a, we're a little late here. Technical hitches. Uh, as everyone's still working from home. I'm sure they can uh, they can agree with, and uh, that ties in nicely um, to what we're going to talk about today because. Um, um, mesh Wi-Fi can really help you out if, if you're working at home. So we'll um, we'll go into that in a, in, a, in a little bit more depth for over the next 45 minutes or so. Um, with me, uh, I would say as always, but um, he did miss the last webinar. But with me today, um, due to popular demand, is our technical pre-sales engineer, Craig Kirby. Hello, everybody. Yes, I did miss the last webinar. I'm afraid I uh, couldn't do anything about that. I was I was very poorly, but uh, <laughs> it's all good. Now. It's all good. <laughs> yes. We're back. We're, we're back now. Normal services resumed, and um, Mr. Mr. Routledge did a sterling job in your in your absence, Craig. You'll you'll be glad to know. I'm I'm sure you re-listened to the webinar anyway. So, uh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Right. No, they did, did a great job. Did a great job. Yeah. So um, as, as I mentioned, um, we're here to talk about mesh Wi-Fi. And um, if if I had a pound for the time that every journalist or customer via Amazon has had has asked me when D-Link is going to produce a Wi-Fi 6 or a new version of cover, I'd be living uh, in, in, in a nice condo overlooking Miami Beach about now because um, it is a very popular question. Uh, lots of people are asking it because I think the demand for mesh Wi-Fi at the moment is, is through the roof. And one of the reasons is this, is this lovely chap here who he, he might actually be in my Miami condo. I'm, I'm not sure, but he seems to have a, a, lovely, a lovely working environment there, um, which signifies the, the start of... Um, the start of home working so relaxed um it was a pleasure it was lovely the lovely weather um but when the realities of of, of homework home working kick in does your home office now resemble something like this are, are you forced to work in an area of your house that isn't the is isn't the best for you because it's close by uh, to to your router signal um, would you prefer to work in the garden? Do, do you have that, that, that as an option? And one of the things about mesh Wi-Fi is that it can it can open that up for you. It can open up areas of the house that were previously covered um, by Wi-Fi black spots and, and allow you to have that working environment that you really want right next to a window so you can enjoy the sunshine uh, rather than being stuck. Um, in, 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 in a hallway cupboard because you get a great router signal in there. Okay. So with regards to extending a Wi-Fi signal around your house, um, we, we did a lot in a webinar a few weeks back talking about wire connections and we still stand by the fact that wire connections are best if you can have a wired connection um so get yourself a switch wire up your house and um, just just as much as you can but wired solutions can also be the most expensive you have to purchase a switch you have to purchase the wires um in in certain cases you have to get somebody in to do the work for you um so um, running around in your loft, setting up, setting up wires down, drilling holes. And um, the whole thing can um, can prove to be a little bit expensive, e even if it is possibly the most safe and secure option. Uh, option yeah, it's, it's not always uh, the right thing to do either, Alan. Sometimes trying to chase it around the walls or maybe try and chase it through the floorboards, um, what can sometimes happen is that you actually start getting interference from things as well, especially if you're running a cable alongside where a power line cable is as well. Yeah. Um, you can actually get some bleed if, if the cable's not insulated correctly and things like that. It can it can go um, it can actually affect the the signal going through. So you have to watch out for these sorts of things as well. Um, especially in the house, yeah, yeah, especially. Yeah, of course. And sometimes you just can't run the cable. You can't mm. run the cable, or maybe it just looks too ghastly running around, or you have to. <laughs> and trunking can be <laughs> trying to get the trunking right, and then you have to get someone in if you're not able to do it yourself. But yeah, it's it's it, as much as we'd love to do it, it's not always going to be feasible for us. And 
and then you have to think about well maybe some people live in rented properties as well and that do doesn't mean you can't make your own modifications yeah. and things like that yeah and craig craig is the true voice of experience when it comes to that i'm sure you've you've cut many a cable in two and uh <laughs> Run, run, run a multitude of trunking over your time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have. I have. I've used duct tape to to seal things and you know, all, <laughs> all, kinds of, all kinds of rubbish. So. <laughs> the, um, the most requested item for for a desert island: duct tape. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> the the second option is 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 extenders and and extenders or power lines or um, uh, there, there's there's a, there's a variety of, of different names for these. Um, uh, they come in a couple of different forms um, and, and facets and, and designs and stuff. We got we got two D Link examples on there. Um, the, the there's uh, I, I, I'll pass over to Craig because there is some there is some information out there that that's wrong about extending your network and using um, using extenders or other bits like that. Because I, I read on competitors' websites that. Uh, you can't have one network running through your house if you're running an extender. Um, and when we discussed this the other day, Craig, you said that that wasn't true. It just takes um, an amount of setup to be able to do that. Yeah, there's there's extenders can run in multiple different modes. Um, and now some of them might be called universal repeater. And sometimes what you can actually do with a universal repeater is duplicate what you're repeating off and then extend it out. And that's generally what an extender does anyway. Um, but by doing that, what you're actually doing is you're having the same network. It's still the same SSID. It's still yeah. all the same credentials. And you're just extending the bubble, right? So you're making this kind of backbone, network backbone between them, extending the bubble out um, so that you can get it in in so it's almost like like i say extending the bubble you're trying you're trying to increase the size of it or maybe maybe make it longer um so it's like an oval shape of broadcast so that you can get in within that field and, and get some connectivity but you're still on the same network and it will still have for all for all intents and purposes the same ssid so you don't have to change any settings on your phone or, or your that right. and things like that so it is possible it is definitely possible. Yeah. And then there's other things called WDS bridging as well. So some of these extenders will allow you to create a little four four port mesh, if if you if you will. It's not true mesh, but what it means is that you can have devices communicating to each other on their MAC addresses. So sending all the equipment towards each other. And then what you'd be able to do is kind of daisy chain them out so that you could have one traffic going through another traffic if it can't go to it directly and that's something that, that we're able to do with those as well so so some good good options there and and like, like i said if you if you read some articles um a, a lot of a lot of the coverage says that extenders won't allow you and that you have to sign on to another network when you're roaming around your house so um that just just know if you if you do read that then that 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 isn't strictly true and the extenders you can have the same network but the issue with extenders is um, sometimes they're awkward to uh, to position for optimum coverage. It depends on where your uh, where your plugs lie um, uh, in the house. If you if you wanted to wire up your TV, for instance, and it's right in the corner of a bedroom, right in the corner of the house, uh, but you wanted a wire connection there. And as um, as good as extenders are, uh, they do cut the performance of your wireless network by half, um, which brings us on to the the middle ground the solution the the, the thing that solves um, almost everything um uh, which are mesh networks um so mesh networks allow you to have a single ssid roaming around um, roaming around your entire house uh, and they will effectively eliminate um, dead spots or black spots um, across your whole home and they are a scalable solution so you can add on additional units um, dependent on the size shape of your house um, could be very very good for a three-story house to have three different units um, because even though the surface area of the house is, is the same um, it, it would be better to have a, um, a a node placed on your third floor to make sure you were getting um, every inch of, of coverage um, out there and mesh mesh is mesh is the balance like i said mesh is the middle ground between the last two options between the wired and the extender so so it's a pretty good balance between cost and performance for most people yeah absolutely and um some differences between those extenders and, and mesh networks is 
not so much how it looks and broadcasts out, but uh, how it actually performs at the device level. And imagine you're moving from one device to another in terms of the broadcast. There's always going to be at some point where you swap over between one side to the next side, going on to the next device. And that's how what a mesh device network does very well compared to an extender, because what you're able to do is you're able to move quite seamlessly because all of the handover information is done beforehand. Whereas in an extender, it's really just kicking a device off and, and almost letting it fend for itself sometimes. Yes. So it will just reach a point where it says, okay, I'm going to release you. And then the other one will say, it's up to the device to refine another SSID and, and connect to it. And that takes time. And so if you're doing something like a VoIP call, it can cut you off completely. Um, so if you're using WhatsApp or anything like that and you, you get cut off, you'll, you'll lose information or you might even get disconnected. So with a mesh system, what it does is it makes sure that handover is very quick. It's, there's always going to be some handover in the device, but the, if we can minimize the time that it happens to hand over, then it's almost as if we haven't lost any time at all. And it confuses the device into not breaking and uh, carry on working. And that's, that's what mesh does very well. Yeah, and Craig, Craig's point there about the handover um, quite quite shown on the on, on the diagram here. So um, um, the, the living room with with the table would be coverage by node number one in that circumstance, and then as you walk through to the next room with the stairs, you would seamlessly switch over to um, um, to coverage node number two, and then as you go up the stairs, coverage node three would um, would 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 take over the um, would take over the signal, um, so you can see there the um, the series of, um, of of satellite modules or nodes. We 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 tend to call them nodes. Um, placed placed around a so we've got three here placed around a a two story house here for um, for for optimal storage. Uh, sorry, optimal coverage, not storage. Sorry, my bad. Uh, okay. Well, we saw uh, we, we we saw an example on the uh, in 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 the last image there. So the um, the consumer had chosen to have two satellite nodes downstairs, um, and that that could have been down to um, something slowing down the network between um, uh, between the two rooms. Um, so when we look at why mesh network is 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 necessary it's it's made up of a, of a, of a few factors and we've got a kind of a summary um, of each one here so uh, physical obstructions uh, such as uh, such as i mentioned on um, from that image the the wall between the two rooms could um, could block out signals um, and i know that uh, craig himself is 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 a victim of um of, of this at his um, at his house where um, he, he has particularly thick walls or, or do you have insulation in your walls, Craig, that, that dampen? The... No, it's, I think what it is, is there's um, in order, it's something to do with the plaster. The plaster has like a, uh, like a, it's like a chicken wire mesh that goes up <laughs> to allow the plaster to stick. And unfortunately the pattern of this chicken wire mesh is mm. hexagonal and right. it creates a Faraday cage effect. <laughs> Um, so you can't pass any signal through it. And it's, it's actually something that's very common in some of these builds. Mm. And, and, and I think the build is probably only, what, maybe 30 years old or something like that. It's not ter terribly old or anything like that. Um, but it happens and, and it's, mm. it's a way of, uh, it's, it's actually a nightmare, absolute nightmare. It's very <laughs> easy to detect these kind of buildings as well, because yeah. um, I've done a lot of wireless site surveys throughout the years for dealing. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been in some really old buildings and I've had some really good performance. I've been in some brand new buildings with very thin walls and I've had some terrible performance. It's kind of hit and miss. And unfortunately, sometimes you can just uh, be very unlucky. Um, and, and in this case, I think it's the same for me. So I've definitely been tested in trying to think about what I can use, um, a bit of power lines and things like that. I've tried a bit of everything over the, uh, the last couple of years living here. So uh, I'm kind of the pro at trying to find find ways around and, and um, making sure I try every bit of our, our portfolio to try and see what works and what doesn't we'll, work. We'll, we'll, get you, we'll get you one of the covers when it comes out, Greg, so um, don't worry. <laughs> but I suppose, I suppose the, the good thing about the, the, the chicken wire insulation or, or wall coverage is that um, if, if we do have a massive EMP, all, all of your... Um, 
all, all of your electronic products will be projected. So you'll, you'll, you'll get <laughs> quite, quite possibly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> whereas, whereas the rest of the world suffers, Craig is the only man with electricity. So, <laughs> um, so outside of physical ob obstructions, uh, distance. You, if you if you're one of the lucky people who who live in a big big home and um, potentially your Wi-Fi is in is in the, the entrance hall and your, your house extends out and you have a conservatory or um, three, four bedrooms, or as I mentioned, three story houses, you're, you just, the signal is just too, too much for a traditional router to, um, to cover all of that kind of area. Um, so you, you're not going to reach the backyard. You're not going to reach the garage or, or that third story bedroom that you want to, uh, you really want to work in because it's got the best view. Um, so hence what we talked about earlier about um, maybe you're forced to work on the ground floor, whereas you'd rather work up on up on the top floor and have a lovely view of uh, of the countryside out of your window. And um, you know, mesh is one of the ways that you can you can solve that. Um, interference interference is 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 one of those things. I mean, Craig mentioned it earlier already it's not it's not something that can be completely solved but we will talk about um wi-fi 6 a little bit later which does do some work towards alleviating this um, but devices could be interfering with your with your wi-fi signal from the likes of your microwave cordless phone or even if you have a baby monitor it could be it could be broadcasting and the other part of interference is um if you're in a block of a block of flats such as um, such as myself, all of those other uh, Wi-Fi networks that are being broadcasted in the other flats will will have a level of interference um, that, that that you wouldn't be able to do much about. Um, so again, well, mesh mesh is a big improvement um, over your your standard router, and it will help you with all of these issues. But it's not. It doesn't solve them; it just alleviates them um, um, to a certain extent. Okay. Um, so here we are. Um, we are. Uh, we're doing this. We're doing this webinar today on April the twenty eighth. Um, it's it's a little bit earlier than, than I'd like to because the cover units are being released at the end of May. So so this is a this is a pre prelude to um to, to the release date. It's it's a little bit earlier than it's I a coming soon. You can yes. we, we consider it a coming soon. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's, um it's 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 a product that's been delayed by let's just say worldwide circumstances. We don't need to go into any more any more detail than, than that. I think we all know the situation is and the release date for these products has slipped and we pushed back this webinar we pushed it back we pushed it back but we're just we're just too excited to tell you about cover so we we we, we have to we have to do this now um so we're looking at an end of may release date for the two models that you see on the screen here um so you've got the cover x 1862 the x in all of our range um will denote that it's a wi-fi 6 product and the two denotes that it's the two satellite node pack. And then obviously the three beneath that um, will be a free satellite node pack. So you can see there um, in this in this small one bedroom dwelling, the two pack has covered um, uh, the front room, what looks like a little workout area and um, and the upstairs bedroom, whereas we'd recommend the free pack the free satellite module for for a larger story home or 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 a small office if um because a lot of people a lot of people are working from home and once the rules um are, are lifted uh, potentially um people work in the same home um and you probably want the free nodes to get a better to get a better coverage across all of those nooks and, and crannies just to make sure that you can work in a space um and, and get the best signal um, so to just to briefly look at the the feeds and speeds um so as i said this is a wi-fi 6 product it's it's an ax 1800 speed uh it's it's, it's dual bands so you've got the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz frequencies um and the, the the satellite nodes each have a gigabit lan um, and wan port built into them so 
if you wanted a wired connection, in, in this case, you, you can have a wired connection from the satellite node uh, upstairs in the bedroom, and you can have a wired connection from the satellite node downstairs um, in, in this case. Um, would, you, would you be able to use that connection to go to a switch, Craig, if you wanted to have multiple um, yeah, potentially you can. That's that's the uh, the idea behind it. So what you're really doing is you're creating a wireless backbone between the devices, and and that will actually operate on the five gigahertz frequency, um, mm -hmm. to try and reduce the amount of uh, interference that you get in the area, which is why they're so good for it. Um, and then what you're actually doing is you're connecting as a, a device on the client side, uh, both two point four and five gigahertz, and that's how it actually works. So you're you're actually connecting on the uh, the eighteen hundred speed. Uh, and the, the frequency is already built in by a third antenna for it. Um, what you'd then do is each one will have two ports uh, and, and the port, sorry, the one port on some of them, um, and which is a gigabit LAN, and that allows you to connect in something like a switch or maybe just directly to a TV or something like that. Um, obviously, one of these bases is going to have to go right next to a router because that's where your internet connection is going to come from. So the router will connect into one of these one gigabit LAN ports. Uh, or the WAN side, shall I say, and then that frees up the rest of the units for putting around the house. So, for example, um, you might want to put one up in in your uh, bedroom, right, maybe where you've got a PlayStation or, or an Xbox or whatever you use for console gaming, um, so that you can have a really nice fast internet connection directly to the device without trying to get the, you know, the Wi-Fi segment going. So you can increase the speed for it, um, and, and and little things like that. So even reaching far out. So let's say, for example, you have a garage that's uh, down the end and you want to run another couple of wires and things like that, then you can connect it back to one of these devices that's in the house and then you've now extended out your uh, your network with both wireless and, and wired connections. Very useful, very useful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so a lot a lot of the questions that, that we get um, are, are around about how do we how do we set this up? How does Cover work with uh, either a separate uh, modem and router, or if you have one of the um, and, and a lot of people have the newer models now where the modem and router is 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 in the same unit. So um, if your if your setup looks like like this and you've got the internet coming into your um, uh, into your modem and then your modem is connected up to the router so two separate two separate units then the way to set up cover is to take out the router and establish one of the cover units which um, which will become the router so you connect the cover unit to the modem directly so the router is now out of the picture and then that cover unit becomes the new router and then you just simply connect that cover unit to each of the satellite nodes so um uh, posi and position them around the house wherever you would like yeah let's just step through that uh, bit by bit at time alan uh, yeah. just to break it down a little bit further right so obviously you describe the internet and that comes into a modem that might be supplied to you it might be a router already um but more importantly, it's an end node for that termination. So maybe an ADSL or VDSL circuit for most people, I would say. Um, now, just to be clear, these devices, the cover units, they're not just Wi-Fi extenders. We label them as a Wi-Fi extender, but what they are very much so is a, a router. And as a router, you'll have an, an interface that you can log into. You're able to manipulate the firewall rules. You're able to do everything that you would do with a normal router, quality of service, lots of these different features. So just be aware it is a router, but it's also a Wi-Fi extender at the same time. Now, the two connections that are going to the first um, cover device, that would be your Wi-Fi links. There wouldn't be a physical cable going to between those. That would be a wireless link to them. So you don't have to worry about extra cabling for that as well. Yeah, I, I, sorry, I didn't, I, I didn't mention that. The, the, the red there just designates a, a wireless signal there isn't a physical a physical wire between the two units because otherwise that would kind of um kind of defeat the purpose of mesh on there. <laughs> <laughs> so then we've got the second example and in, in this case you've got your um sky or um the virgin modem and router combined units other modem and router um, uh, brands are available 
So <laughs> the best way to deal with this in terms of it using cover is to um, disable the NAT or put the modem slash router combined unit into modem only mode. So you've now disabled the NAT and as in the previous example, one of your cover units connects directly to the modem. Uh, that then becomes the router and then you get the wireless link to the two other cover points. Um, the, you, if you don't disable the NAT, the, the device will still work but you'll have a, broad, um, a wireless network being broadcast by the modem router and by the cover units, and that's not, um, it's not optimal. Uh, so um, disable the NAT. <laughs> yeah, quite, quite important to do, Alan, because what, what can happen sometimes is that someone will come along with a product which is a similar IP address scheme to, to the cover device, for example, um, and that wouldn't be able to work to each other without changing one or the other. One of them would have to be changed because they might be on the same subnet. Um, but very likely, if you've purchased your device from an ISP or they've been given, they've given you uh, the device from the ISP when you purchase the line, uh, have a look and see if you can get them into bridge mode because that is the best way. When you put it into bridge mode, yeah. you're turning off all the router features of the device and then you're allowing the cover system to take over the control of it and it's much more advanced, so it's going to be much better for you. Yeah, it's, um, um, it's, it's, it's highly unlikely that your ISP supplied modem and router is going to be AX, um, AX1800, Wi-Fi 6. It, it <laughs> yeah. could be wireless N, it could be wireless G if, if you have a yeah. replacement for two. Right. And it but, probably won't have quality of service features. Yes. Um, yeah. have VPN features, because these have VPN, you know, to go in, you know, you might be in a coffee shop. VPNing into your your home network so that you can retrieve your files for work or, or just to stream one of your backed up movies and uh, who knows. Well, all, all those security features are so much more important now, Craig, because no, and nobody knows who's lurking on a cafe Wi-Fi system or, or whatever, and especially if you're trying to do work now with um, the proliferation of working from home. So, um, um, but you you really will notice the speed the speed difference if you've got an older combined modem. Uh, modem and router so um and it's a great it's a great time to make the uh, make the upgrade to to, to wi-fi 6 so okay um we're just going to briefly talk about the um some of the features we won't go too much into in, in in depth because we have touched on these um already um but one of the one of the big selling features of of the cover um, X1860 is that smart roaming uh, and I think this this guy I think this is where I got the idea about my condo in Miami from this this picture here Craig so uh, <laughs> if, if if you do want to work by the pool if you want to work in the bedroom if if, if it's a nice day outside today in uh, where I am is, is awful so I wouldn't be doing that but uh, the the cover unit and the position of the cover units around the house would, would, would allow you to get a better Wi-Fi signal outside and you can seamlessly roam. If the sun gets too bright, if it gets too hot and you're on a call, um, you don't have to hang up the call. You can walk back into your um, into your normal office and, and remain on the same SSID. Um, so so that, that switching that we talked about earlier, making sure that you're on the best possible signal, you're connected to the closest satellite node, um is um it's it, it it's 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 really really powerful um and and the other thing as well craig i don't know if you know more about this what what if one of the salad nodes goes down um is that is that something where the system uh would um would would, would still automatically route you to the would, would, i mean um the is, is there self-diagnosis in this so it would know if one of the units was down and then just connect leave you connected to the other one the other yeah one. so it, it operates on the broadcast um anyway so if a node was down in particular it wouldn't be any broadcast there so it would just look for the next available broadcast so it's, it's quite smart enough to look no, i i asked that question badly I, I i knew what i meant but i, I didn't express it very well but that um <laughs> no from yeah, take it from me, these units are going to be fine. They're, they're not going to be breaking down anytime soon. So you'll be absolutely fine. <laughs> no, but you might have someone who's hoovering and decides to turn it off. So Ooh, yes, yeah. <laughs> very, very possible. Very, very possible. Or they think it's, um, they do resemble um, those oil diffusers that you see on um, on Amazon. So somebody might think it's one of those and put some incense in it. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, the Wi-Fi app. Um, I feel it, it's becoming fairly standard now that people want to manage their um, want to, want an app to manage their Wi-Fi from. And, and Craig mentioned that earlier as well that these products are routers, and so each cover unit comes with 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 this Wi-Fi wizard that is not only great for allowing you to set up the product so quickly, so you get a little QR code, which is scanned by the app, and the app gives you a little animation for, for, for what to do next and where you are and what to do if the light is orange versus when it starts flashing green. Um, there's, there's also a number of bits in here that allow you to play around with the functionality of the app. So um, if you set up a guest network, you can have that guest network turn off or um, setting up controls and, and, and all sorts of um, different things that suddenly so turn off at night. Yeah, and, and this is really in particular to uh, parental controls. Yes, um, make exactly. It easy. Yeah. So, uh, if, for example, you, you want to turn your Wi-Fi off at particular times, mm. you can certainly just press it at the touch of a button of your hand and say, okay, well, it's bedtime, everybody, <laughs> off you go. So. <laughs> and chances are they won't stick around if there's no internet anyway. <laughs> Time to well, go. yeah, the, 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 the problem is, Greg, is that they all have 4G as well, and they, they switch to 4G, don't they? So, But um, we, we, we're doing our very, very best to, to, to help you out with this, um, with the parental controls and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it, it will allow you to reboot the router, upgrade the firmware. It will just take care of all of those pesky tasks for you automatically. So it's um, it's it, it's a great little tool to have. The the, the other part which we which we really like is um, support for Google Assistant and Alexa. So convenient convenient hand free controls and just talking to your router um in 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 english or or whatever language um your um smart speaker is is set up in allows you to set up those controls um sorry my smart speaker went off then when i mentioned that so <laughs> uh, if it did the webinar picked up so uh, yeah so if it, you can speak you can speak um, you can set up the voice controls to be able to set up your parental control if you want it to start um, run between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. You can do that all via voice, so you don't have to do it all on the app. If you're if you're not particularly app savvy, you can use your smart speaker and just speak to it to set everything up. So it's just um, it's just it's just nice nice to have, and and the integration into the smart home and the whole arena. Uh, means that you can look at all of these devices at the same time in the same place in your in your Google Home or your um, Amazon Alexa environment. So um, a, 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 a nice to have there. Okay. So as we mentioned, the the couple of units are Wi-Fi six. So we're, now we're going to move on to talk a little bit more depth about Wi-Fi six. Um, we did do a full webinar on Wi-Fi six um, last year, and uh, not not much is not not much has changed in that. But um, it's it's a it's it's a good time to give everyone a reminder of uh, where Wi-Fi six has come from, why it's here, how it increases your capacity, your security. And, and all those other bits. And it go, relating it back to the very first slide when we were talking about working from home, the, the WPA3 as standard on, on Wi-Fi 6 units is it, it's, it, it's paramount in terms of um, the extra security that it gives you, especially for those people um, working from home. Uh, so if we have a little, little bit of a look at the timeline here to show just how far um, Wi-Fi has come from its first iterations back in 1997. So Wi-Fi 6 was launched in 2019, but it didn't really gain lots and lots of momentum until um, 2020. Um, I remember when I joined Dealing back in 2019, uh, Wi-Fi 6 was out, but they were still finalizing what Wi-Fi 6 was and the um, the standards to which you had to adhere to be able to call your router Wi-Fi six. So you have... yeah, they I think they were still ratifying it back yes, then. That's, that's the word. They're yeah. ratifying. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, but so... I think in general, um, when a device is released, there's always a little bit of pickup time between them. It's, yeah. it's yeah. Like like today, we're talking about what Wi-Fi six actually is. I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't really know or, or aren't really bothered. And I think sometimes it's it's a case of <laughs> some people aren't really bothered until they learn how it's going to actually be useful for them and that's really what that education piece is all about as well which is what we're trying to do today.
Yeah, and, and, and I think that what you say there, Craig, they're, they're not bothered until it affects them, until they work from home and they realise that I could really do with an upgrade to my wife. It's because the the kids are on TikTok. uh, Me and the wife are both working at home, and the network is just struggling. And I've got a gig file, a gig Photoshop file to download, and it's going to take four hours, and I can't do any work until I've done it. That's when a good time to go out and get a new router. (laughs) (laughs) Oh gosh! So um, we'll look at. We'll look at each one of these bits in, in in a little bit more depth, but we won't we won't go too much in depth. But um, um, the next two slides are definitely Craig slides. These these are these these are Craig's baby. So I'm going to hand over to Craig to talk about OFDM and OFDMA. Yeah, and I'm not going to get too technical because I don't want to bore everybody. But um, we will just say that uh, OFDM is really something about how frames move across the network and and how you can have different uh, applications and they'll use different different ways of transporting their data. Now, this is the older way of doing it and this is what would be on Wi-Fi 5 and absolutely it was great for how it helped us with AC uh, communication because before it was even worse. Um, but what you can see is that uh, obviously whereas we transport data, we transfer this bit of data, we transfer that bit of data and it's different and we have to wait for it to all sort of get to the other side for the device to then respond back and then we kind of ping pong backwards and forwards with data across the network. And it's not really good enough uh, for wireless. And I've had I've discussed this quite a few times, I think in the webinars, Alan, where we kind of talk about how the wireless is really using some very, very old communication techniques, which really are for designed for wired networks. And it's kind of been shoehorned into a wireless. And, and until someone builds something better, this is what we have to deal with, these mechanisms. And the mechanisms that were designed for maybe a single two devices on a PC connected via one cable back in you know, 30 years ago, wouldn't really have much loss and they'd be able to talk and make sure all the information was correct but now you're you're trying to have many clients and wirelessly <laughs> sending their signal through through space um and you're expecting it to try and perform the same way it's not going to work it's not going to happen it's not going to work the same way so now what the whole point of of these wi-fi systems wi-fi four five and six is that introducing new ways to say well okay this is a problem how are we getting around it and that's where we start looking at Wi-Fi. And that's really what Wi-Fi 6 is about and what, what the difference is between Wi-Fi 5 is these new techniques to try and make sure that our traffic is better shaped, working better, sending it across, getting to the other side and doing it faster and, and doing it for lots more people. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So how do we do that? This, this is a new inclusion, OFDMA, which is orthogonal frequency division multiple access. It's a bit of a mouthful, but um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just try to remember yeah, OFDMA. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what that really does is, uh, like I was talking about those frames, they send them into like bigger chunks, but kind of uh, across uh, making sure that the transport information has better headers, sending the signal across on the network and, and making sure there's just more data on the other side to be unbroken down apart and, and making sure it's reaching the right right person. Mm. So what that means, what that effectively means, what that actually does for you as a result means that the time taken between sending information is faster. And that means there's le- le- less latency. Now latency is a real killer when it comes to gaming, because what you have to do when you think about when you're when you're gaming on an Xbox and you're, you're pressing a button and sending that information to, to across the internet to a server and then back, that's latency and, and the longer that takes the more it's a slow signal you have to wait for it to come back and then you know you know did you did you did you jump then and did you miss the jump did you hit the jump and you know all that sort of things that you're doing gaming you, that's what makes it better if we can if we can reduce the, the time the latency between that information so latency is very important for gaming so wi-fi 6 is really good for gamers okay uh, I, I can, as I as I said before, Craig, I can only attest to that with my, um, as I managed to get hold of a PlayStation 5, I have a, a wired connection to my Wi-Fi 6 router and um, my latency has been as low as 6 um, on, on certain games and it, it generally 
floats up to around eight to ten at certain points, but that is definitely better than I was getting before. And um, I have definitely, definitely lost less games on FIFA. So um, I, I'm more than happy with Wi-Fi Six. It, it's helped me win more more football matches. So <laughs> oh, there you go. that's the important part. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it really is. It really is. <laughs> See, seeing as we may be having a dealing tournament coming up soon, I need to get my practice in. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> There we go. So um, the next the next one is um, is Mumimo or multi user, multi input, multi output, and um, this is this is one of the areas where Wi Fi six has really improved because they have um, implemented it across um, both spectrums, which they didn't have previously. Uh, so yeah. So um, if we were to remember that uh, a couple of slides ago, we were talking about the, the years that we went. I think you would have seen something like 2009 would have been the last time they kind of implemented uh, the shift between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. That's where they introduced AC. Because what we did have was, was, was 5 gigahertz N, but it didn't increase the speed of anything. Okay. Um, and then it kind of shifts over. And unfortunately, what that meant was that the 2.4 gigahertz frequency was completely left alone. And we now relied on 5 gigahertz to try and get those extra faster speeds um, not much work has really been done on it since then and now with AX kind of going back to it and saying well let's 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 bring all this new technology to 2.4 gigahertz as well because we still use it 2.4 gigahertz frequency does actually extend further out so if you're if you're in a really in a, an environment where you can't necessarily be close to the wireless signal chances are you're, you're going to be put onto the 2.4 gigahertz network by default now if you're on an older router, what that means is you're going to have a much slower connection. Um, but it doesn't really matter so much if you're on an AX device on that 2.4 gigahertz because you'll still have a lot of the improved techniques of AX to try and help you with your with your connection to your Wi-Fi. So there is still a use for 2.4 gigahertz. We still need it. It still has to be used. Um, but now it's improved as well. The the thing about two point four as well, Craig, is that I I've got a lot of Wi Fi gadgets in my home. I'll call them um, some things that are Wi Fi enabled, like my lamp, for instance. And a, a Wi Fi lamp doesn't need to be on five gigahertz. And I also have a Wi Fi enabled washer dryer, um, which really doesn't need to be on the five um, the five gigahertz uh, spectrum. So. I, what, what, what I see now is that a lot of the the gadgets and the very low usage uh, Wi-Fi, they, they go on the 2.4, um, leaving the 5 yeah. gigahertz spectrum free for your PlayStation 5, your Netflix, and, and all those other devices. But yeah, so even improving the 2.4, um, it, it will have an effect on those devices. And as you said, if, you, if you're not getting a full signal, um, you'll definitely get the benefits of, of Moomimo on 2.4 if you if if the five gigahertz um, spectrum can't reach that place. So very useful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that it kind of brings us into that IoT field as well, where small devices are, are getting connections and they're getting them obviously further away in, in the house from your yeah. main signal. Yeah. If you if you only have one router as well, so um, absolutely required. Well, it's why it's why it's why the five G networks taking time to build, isn't it? Because those super fast transmitters they they have a much lower broadcast range than the four G. So yeah, absolutely. You make stuff better, but the broadcast range goes down. So. Yeah, and that's why we yes. build things like mesh. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Um, so I'm I, I'm I'm not going to attempt to say that. I'm just going to call this one hundred two four QAM. That that's that's what I'm going to call it. But this um, quadrature amplitude modulation. Nice. Yeah, so thank yeah. thank thank you, great, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what this basically means is um, it actually uses like a series of dots and wavelengths to try and send. You know, we won't go into that. No, no I've, I've seen those diagrams and um, yeah. you've seen those diagrams. They're very boring, trust me. Um, <laughs> but really, what we're talking about is is that high capacity. Yes. Again. It, we can keep saying this, we can say it's got this, it's got that. So ultimately, Wi-Fi 6 is, is a big improvement over yeah. Wi-Fi 5. Take that away for you. Just take our word for it. It's got mm -hmm. some really good impressive techniques in there. Um, <laughs> but what this does in particular is it increases the amount of throughput we get. Throughput is really about how much traffic we can do at any one time, which is very important when you're a single user. Because a lot of these techniques that we're talking about, 
is very good for when you've got um, lots of people in a house because it, it improves everybody's way of sending information and talking to each other. But sometimes we might be alone in an environment. And when we're in alone in an environment, we won't really benefit from those techniques because it's just you and the router and you're sending the signal. So if we can increase the amount of traffic you're going through, the actual throughput of it, even if you're just a single person in a household, you're going to benefit from Wi-Fi 6, yeah. not just the case of everybody in a big household benefiting. No, it's, it, well, there's so, so many devices that connect to the um, in, internet. As, as I've said, my washer dryer, um, my, one of my friends has got Wi-Fi um, lights on his Christmas tree. So um, the, the, the extra capacity that comes with Wi-Fi 6 will be well served because we'll, we'll see Wi-Fi built into devices in ways that we... Um, we, we, we either can't imagine now we can't we can't see a use for, but I'm sure it will become a matter of of course moving forwards, fridges, washing machines, microwaves, all, all sorts of stuff. I've, I've seen the Wi-Fi kettle. I, I definitely want to get a Wi-Fi kettle um, so I can put the kettle on while I'm walking the dog and then have a nice cup of tea when I get back. It sounds sounds brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you not use a smart plug for your kettle, Helen? Should I should have done daily smart plug. Would have done that job. It's. <laughs> I don't want to go off track, Craig, but you can use it <laughs> once. But the problem is, is that you have to go to the kettle and turn the kettle on, so that uh, when you turn the smart plug on, the kettle is on. If the kettle is off and you turn the smart plug on, the kettle still doesn't come on. So, what if I got gotcha. you? That's, gotcha. that's my next investment. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we're, we're not going to talk too much about um, about target wait time because target wait time is is a big thing for businesses. It's a big thing for factories, as you can see here, with multiple multiple devices. Um, but what it what what it will do for your home is it will it will help with the um, with the battery life of, of of certain devices. It will help. Uh, with power saving across so if your if your phone if you're lucky enough to have a samsung s20 or an iphone 12 and they are connected to your wi-fi 6 um router modem or mesh cover unit then you will have um you will have slightly extended um, um battery life from that um and that's that's down to the um the devices kind of um being put to sleep when they're not in um, in use, Craig, is that is that a good way to explain it? Or yeah, so I imagine it as like an agreement of when they're going to be um, mm. operating and when they're going to need commu communication. So rather than just coming on and then asking for a request, you kind of talk to each other and you say, "Well, I don't need anything until this point," and then you say, "Okay, well, if you don't need anything until that point, that means I can schedule someone else in, and they can have that, and then I'll come to you once you're ready." So it kind of builds a list so that nobody's operating at the right time at the same time. So the contention between trying to get things done on the router is uh, it doesn't become a problem anymore because they're all all scheduled in a nice sequence and able to talk to each other. And that's what it means is it means you can put it into sleep mode for quite a long time, which means you're saving battery uh, on the device because it doesn't have to keep talking to the router periodically all the time. That's brilliant. Um, just just to mention, if there are any questions, um, just feel free to leave them in the question section. As as usual, I forgot to ask that at the start. Um, but if you do have any questions about Wi-Fi six mesh cover, anything like that, um, they pop them in the question box, and and we'll get to them at the end um, of of the webinar. Um, so uh, last slide. I, I talked about interference um, earlier on and, and how the, the cover units um, work to negate that um, interference or bring that amount of interference down. And the way that they do that is through DSS, um, which is basic service set coloring. And so you can see here your, your traditional oh, Wi-Fi AC connection there where You've got two routers and the coverage overlaps. The, um, the devices are confused and interfered with in, in that overlapping space. Um, but what Wi-Fi 6 does is Wi-Fi 6 injects a color into your, into your connection. So in this case, um, uh, I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm the blue guy and, and Craig is the pink guy there. So you can see that the intersection between my Wi-Fi signal and Craig's Wi-Fi signal um, while I'm on my mobile phone, I'm still connected to mine and Craig is still connected to his. 
um, despite the overlap between the two areas. And that, that's the one way that Wi-Fi 6 helps to um, not completely solve, but it, it, it helps a lot with um, interference within uh, if, if you're living in a block of flats, for instance, because it, uh, it allows that overlap and it leaves it leads to less interference when you're in those overlapping areas of uh, of Wi-Fi networks there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and just to be clear, we, we use the term colouring. It's obviously not actual colours that we use. Um, <laughs> but what we are injecting is kind of information into a packet that identifies where it's come from and who to listen to and who not to listen yeah. to. That's, that's the yeah. idea. But the idea of colouring is it kind of gives us that, that visual representation. It makes more sense to us when we look at it. Yeah, it's, 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 there's, there's, no, there's no ink packs injected into it. <laughs> Yeah. The access point that will explode on you when you're walking past. No, it's it's just the term that we use to easily demonstrate this. It gives us a you know an, a nice artistic picture that we could show in a in, in a presentation and a webinar. Um, that's that's about what we've got um for for this week. So um as as I said um uh, we, we're very excited about this. We do have um a question which has been left for us um. Craig, I will read this to you. Okay. Um, can you connect the units with Cat6, daisy chain or star from the router? Would that give you better throughput? Right. Okay. So I think what, uh, let, let's address the first question. There's two questions there. Can you use Cat6 cable? Can you use a, a cable to actually connect the devices up? No, you, you, you can't actually do that for the cover units. Um, it's, it's a Wi-Fi backbone. That's how they're designed to be used. Um, and if you did cable them, the communication wouldn't actually be there for the devices to talk to each other. So they would still be talking over for the Wi-Fi, but what would happen is that you're kind of creating a loop. So uh, don't do that. It, would be, it would, wouldn't be the right thing to do because uh, then it wouldn't work. Um, Second question was um, daisy. daisy chain for routers. So, would you connect them back to the router individually rather than talking to each other? Again, they're designed to actually be um, like you, you have one of the devices, say, say a three pack, one of those devices actually has like a little label on it, and they class it as label A. And that really is the one that has to go right next to your internet connection because the other two will then communicate back to that first device. So um, they, they will talk to each other, but you have to have that one device first and that has to be your master device, okay? Uh, one, one more question um, has just come in. Um, can you use the cover units to mesh a 5G network? Um, so, um, right. Okay. So, can you use a five G cover can, unit? Yeah. Right. Can Can you use the cover units? Um, connect them to a five G router potentially. I'm 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 saying and um right. and then mesh a five G network around your house because obviously five G is. On, on the well, they they're different cell signals. Um. So you, the 5G part would be for your ISP. Um, and therefore, I presume that would be a SIM card and the SIM card would be installed in something. So if you, if you have a 5G router, yes. Um, yes, if you have a 5G router, so a router that's got a SIM card slot and you put it in and it operates as a router, what you would then be able to do is provide, and it depends on the router, it depends on the router you have, but you might be able to get a router Certainly, I say might be able to get a router. If you bought our router, uh, our coming 5G router, what you'd be able to do is send that signal back, like uh, almost like a demilitarized zone, right? So, but what you're basically doing is you're taking out the routing part and you're just sending the IP address back to the cover unit. Yeah. And the cover unit then obviously operates just for Wi Fi 6. So, very much what you're doing is you're benefiting from the whole signal of that 5G device yeah. because Wi Fi 6 is obviously good enough as a signal to keep up with the, the great throughput you get through 5G. Um, so, yeah, you could do it that way. You could, you could definitely do it that way. That's, uh, that's interesting because we, we discussed on the 5G uh, webinar before, Craig, didn't we, that people will be considering leaving their fixed line broadband and setting up 5g as their main internet into their house and um you know you're seeing seeing that as a question shows that people are thinking about doing that so 
get yourself a 5G SIM card and on, on an unlimited plan and um, plug it into a router. And then rather than have fixed line broadband or having fixed line broadband as a backup, um, use 5G to get um, a, a, a very fast signal around your house. So Yeah. Absolutely. And I think the future is um, certainly for a business perspective, um, hybrid devices where you have certainly have a, a normal line, but within that line will be a, a SIM card, maybe one that you can't actually touch or, or manipulate. Um, and that will actually be part of your internet connection that you pay for because it will have that 5G backup and they'll be able to use them both at the same time. So that's, that's certainly something that's, that's uh, mm. looking like the future for, for the world. Let's uh, let's get you in the product team, Craig, because that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where do you think I get these crazy ideas from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, that's both questions um, that we've had for today's webinar. So um, all, all that's left is for me to say um, um, thanks for joining. We we are planning a webinar, another webinar in probably three weeks' time. Um, but we're, we're not 100% sure on what that is yet. But um, um, stay on the eu.dlink.com website. Um, there's a banner on the front page that takes to the events. And I'll be sending out an email um, as soon as we know what that topic will be. Um, if you've got any questions um, and you, you didn't get to ask them today, uh, you can either drop us a call on 0208 or drop us an email at UKI sales at dlink.com um that's that's about it so um i'll just say just say thanks for joining and um hopefully see you again in a few weeks thanks everybody bye now see you soon